I want to get into this show right here, right now. Hit the subscribe button, slap the like button. And what have you seen take place this past week as it pertains to comic books being purchased at Walmart? Hey, man, it's like troubles are brewing, you know? We don't know who to blame. You got Marvel, you got Diamond. You know, Diamond does the distribution. They do the picking of, uh, well, Marvel actually sends along the word. The word comes down from Marvel, it goes to Diamond. Diamond does what they do, which is distribute. And in this distribution, there's all these crazy variants. But it's not the first time that we've seen variants in these Walmart three packs. I mean, they've had them before. They've had ratio variants in three packs before. What we haven't seen before is what Bleeding Cool is dubbing Variant Gate. We have so many different things showing up in the market right now. I'm getting tagged on Instagram. You can follow me at Comic Tom 101. Follow Key Collector Comics over on Instagram as well. But we have members that are posting things that they're unboxing, unbagging from their trip at Walmart, paying $9 for a pack of three comics that traditionally, as Nick just mentioned, you know, sometimes it's a cover A. Most of the time it's covers a, cover A's, right? But we also have one in 25s and one in 50s. And that's traditionally why people get really hyped about these packs. You have a chance at something that maybe didn't make it throughout distribution. But we have members getting a lot bigger value out of these. And I don't think Marvel nor Diamond anticipated that. I think it was on accident. I don't know about that. I don't know. You don't know? I mean... Well, I, you know, look, I mean, Marvel, if they want to juice up their sales with Walmart, I mean, the thing to do is to get this type of conversation going where everybody, oh my God, I, I, I got to get out there. I got to get out. You know, they're driving all around and everybody's going crazy trying to look for these three packs that have, I mean, what have we seen? We've seen, you know, what that uh, design variant for demon days. That was like a one in 500 that I don't know what it, it goes. It took a bit of a drop in value, but it's, it's triple quadruple the value of how much it costs for those comic packs. Yeah, Nick, we actually have a member of the community who tagged us a Supremo Superman pulled one of those demon days, one in 500. It's got super excited. And we also have a homie in the community who got so lucky. We're talking about Wayne barbecue Beer and Pops, who pulled a Thor one in a thousand hidden gem variant. This is crazy stuff. People are getting really excited about it. I wanted to hit you with this quote, though, from Bleeding Cool, because they did some analysis on this. They say that Diamond told them that Diamond acts as the agent for Marvel and as such picks, pulls, and ships the products as requested. So this sounds like they're taking the heat for this. They're taking the full blame. Well, you know, I don't know about heat. I, I, you know, it's, I'm of two minds about it. And I think that, look, you know, people are finding some pretty cool comics, some great ratio variants, and they're excited about it. And I think that this type of thing needs to happen every once in a while, you know, I mean, collectors thrive on the wins. The hunt. And it seems, yeah, it seems like a lot of times, you know, th there's these roadblocks to getting the wins. Well, we have a YouTuber that actually did an unboxing of like 30 packs. I sent you this video before the podcast here today, and he did indeed pull a handful of really scarce variants. And a lot of these are ones that I would expect to probably get out there in these packs. We're talking like the Thor number six, second print, you know, Thanos or Thane. We don't know yet. Donny Kate says he's going to come back to this story where he's wearing the gauntlet in one hand and he's surrounded by zombified Marvel characters. Um, a lot of people were hunting for the Patrick Gleason ASM 55 second print. That's been found um, that, you know, and a one in 25, as you mentioned, like, People were kind of expecting that kind of thing to happen. What they weren't expecting is seeing a Silver Surfer 5 foreshadow variant. That's like a $500 book, one in 500. Marvel Zombies Resurrection, one in 500. And then as mentioned, the Thor 1 hidden gem variant. That's a one in 1,000. But aside yeah, from the it, excitement around possibly getting a gem, a hidden gem, there were also store exclusives that somehow made their way in there. I mean... Can you imagine being a store like I, we make exclusives here and I can definitely see various problems arising from that? Yeah, I guess, uh, you know, uh, Patrick Gleason was going off about it. <clears throat> I look, I don't blame him, you know, I mean, but really, 
Think about what's to stop. We've been looking at this stuff on posts, on Instagram, on Facebook. What's to stop someone from just kind of trolling or joking around and saying, look, I found this because I saw one of those remastered McFarlane uh, variants, the one in a thousand that sells for like 200 bucks. Someone posted that. And I was like, uh, that's like five years old. I mean, is it possible that somebody just went into the collection, took something out, put it up? Like, why not? Right. Yeah, it could be fishy stuff. Um, I, you know, I've only seen a handful of these, but the particular video in question, um, big shout out for posting this, the 30 uh, packs unboxing. We're talking about Ramsey versus comics who did that over on his YouTube channel. He actually goes through a bunch of them in real time. You see him unpack them. And there was indeed a Frankie's Comics Venom exclusive. I mean, it literally says the store brand on the back of the book and (laughs) that right right there is a big mistake especially considering like the patrick leeson the reason why he was upset wasn't because of the one in 25 that's just a standard ratio variant you know those are gonna yeah they're not his they're not his web store right exactly but it's the web store variant that he started seeing pop up in facebook forms and people unboxing them and that's unfortunate because there's a print count to that and they sold that as the print count that what they solicited. So this, yeah, was- I didn't see that. I didn't see those one going out those, but you know, it's, and that's the weird thing. It's like, where, you know, where are these coming from? Because my understanding is that a store orders this stuff and a store has delivered this stuff. And I understand there's damages, but I, why wouldn't they just send them everything and then, you know, leave it up to the store to, decide what to do. Are they overprinting? Like if somebody orders 3000 is, is the printer actually printing 3,500 and sending them to diamond and then diamond sends out 3000 and then does another shipment based on whatever's damaged. Well, I can say, you know, cause we do uh variants and I'll talk about specifically like dynamite, for example. So we have a uh, Betty page homage to phantom lady comment on one dot com to join the mystery mail call. We have uh, versions of this one per box going out. That's a plug. It, plug. Is, it is a plug. It is indeed a plug, but there is always a um, allocation. It's a little bit extra that are printed in the event that there are damages. And my experience with diamond is every single time, there's something that goes wrong, whether it be with the printer, whether it be with diamond shipping out stuff. I mean, heck, our Something is Killing the Children book, one went to like Ireland and another went to the East Coast, like boxes of our books. And then once they got shipped to us, you you know, it's it's traveling the world and the country back and forth like things went wrong. Um, but this, the expectation is that those printings that we don't get, they end up getting destroyed. And I'm also curious, um, considering that Marvel's moving to Penguin, um, c- coming months, like this is happening by the end of the year. We already set up our Penguin account to be able to do our next exclusive that maybe that this like relationship with Diamond is going to change. And I'm not sure how they're going to be handling these Walmart packs going forward. I got to assume though, regardless, considering that they're taking the heat, according to Bleeding Cool, that they're not happy and that they're going to be making some changes to prevent this from happening in the future. Well, apparently they're not being destroyed. I mean, right? In Walmart, these three packs are like a dumping ground for overstock, but it's just, it's odd. I mean, it's odd that there's, I I would think that they would have this scheduled sort of what is going to go into these three packs, but these high ratio variants, you know, and look, I could totally empathize with the stores that go, well, why are these just going out now in, in three packs to Walmart? Because Marvel what is the point of this? You know, what is the point? Is it, you know, Marvel says, Hey, uh, well, you know, this is an effort to try to get new readers, but that's not, you know, putting comics in Walmart, you know, where, but is that possible? I mean, are these comics, these three packs are not meant for people that are, you know, they want to get into reading comics because it's just like a, a hodgepodge of stuff that you would never be able to, pick up the story from right yeah it's like the money beats you know they put them at the end of one of the aisles and like hey you want some comic books add this to your grocery shopping list this is what uh patrick gleason actually had to say he said this was done without our knowledge or consent as an online retailer i'm also awaiting along with our customers an explanation from any involved parties but then he also went out of his way to say after finding out you know further information seeing bleeding cool that the coa that he puts with his exclusives that he sells 
that if it doesn't have a COA, then you should consider this comic book, this exclusive retailer variant, as a reject, that it's not part of the original run, and that you should expect that COA, or you should expect this book to not be looked at the same way otherwise. And I'd love to hear your thoughts about that, because the first thing I think of is that that's not going to do anything. You know, I think that's wishful thinking that people are going to demand a COA for a book that is a uh, uh, an exclusive, you know, people are after the book. The COA is secondary. Most of the time it's thrown away. You send it to CGC. They don't even put it in the slab. They send that back and I lose them half the time. Uh, the COA, I, I mean, now it's part of it. Now it's attached to it, right? So that's what he's saying, but it doesn't, you're right. It doesn't matter. And the, and the issue at hand is well, how the hell many of these things are out there? How many of these are going out there? How many of these are printed? And it, in my opinion, you know, that's, there just, there needs to be some kind of transparency as a collector, you know, in my opinion, transparency of print runs and everything would make this a lot easier because Marvel undoubtedly markets comic books to collectors, investment collectors, even, even though they won't admit it, they wouldn't admit it. They'd say, Oh no, this is, you know, they were just, we, this is for readers. This is for people that love the art. This is, you know, they'll never say that they're marketing towards investment, but they do, you know, I mean, there's no doubt about it. So just give some sort of transparency because now we don't have what we had before this COVID pandemic, which was the ability to see an estimation of a print run, which was compiled by John Jackson Miller at Comicron. Those days are over. You know, there's, there's, we're not getting that information. So for the health of the hobby, which does depend on people who invest for the health of the hobby, there should be some transparency to print runs. Comic fam. I want to know your thoughts about this in the comment section below. Are you hitting Walmart? Are you hunting next to the grocery aisle? Is Tarjay next? Walgreens on the horizon. I got to know your thoughts. Nick, any last words on the subject? You would think Marvel, look, their Walmart program hasn't been that exciting, right? And I think that we've seen more recently less excitement about these Marvel 3-packs hitting big with collectors. And that's probably why part of this has happened, you know, because we know what it was like maybe a year ago when some Walmart exclusives. But Marvel, they're not creative with you know, the covers, it's usually you'll get like an X-Men number one, the logo will be a different color. And it's like, come on. I mean, let's, let's get a little bit more, uh, you know, let's give us a reason to be excited. And yes, this is a reason to be excited, but it also sort of shakes the confidence of people, right? I mean, is the confidence in some of these books, not a little called into question? Absolutely. You know, I do think that it's a little early, early to tell whether we should be blaming Marvel, especially considering that Diamond's the one who handles all of this distribution. They hold the stock. They're the ones who's doing all receivables and exporting of the goods. But we don't know at this point. But regardless, what we do know is that we have a flood of collectors hitting Walmart, which, although to the collectors and us is, you know, a little concerning, it's got to be a good thing for those businesses. Well, yeah, but we have a flood of, you know, possible variants that we thought were distributed True. coming into the market. So, you know, with that book that's worth $200, how many more of these books exist? And to, it calls the entire ratio thing into question when we don't know when this faucet of distribution is up. Because look, if there's if there's a hundred more books of a one in 500 that are out there now and they go to CGC and they're getting graded 9.8, that totally destroys the value of what was once a $500 book. So that's why I think that there needs to be some sort of assurance given to collectors. And this, I look, I know people are excited. I know some people are not happy. And I know that some stores are not happy. And this isn't going to just be something that's never addressed. 
we're gonna have to wait and see. You know, I do appreciate some creators like like Patrick and some other stores sharing their opinions, their grievances about this because print counts do matter. It affects the price and incentive variance, as you mentioned. Like we're not just talking about one in twenty fives, which you know, considering that one in tens, one in twenty fives, they're made in an abundance. You know, just do the math. If you have a store putting to press three thousand issues or even more if you're considering virgin copies, that's a lot of one in tens that could be purchased that they're likely overprinting. So there is going to be a backstock, but it's these large ratio numbers that don't come up very often. And especially when you consider that notion that if it doesn't come up often, it pushes the price up because there's more people waiting for it to hit the internet. Well, we're talking books that are hitting 500 bucks. 400 bucks. That's a lot of money. And then if there's a flood of two, three, four extra issues, even that small number, which we've actually seen in just a handful of packs, what does that do to the market? 